acid deposition. In this video, we're going to talk about the chemistry of the formation of acid rain, exactly where the species that result in acid rain come from, methods we can look to decrease the presence of these species, and then the effects that acid rain can have. Okay, so rain is actually naturally acidic. It naturally has a pH of about 5.6. That's really because CO2 is always present in our atmosphere. It's naturally occurring. And CO2 is known to interact with water, which is also present in the atmosphere, in order to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid, so it results in the pH of rain being shifted slightly below 7, which is what you expect if it was just pure water, to 5.6. And the environment is sort of naturally tuned to operate with rain of this acidity. However, what we find is that many processes that humans control result in the release of nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides. These can combine with water in the same way as CO2 does in the atmosphere in order to form various acidic species, some of which are shown here. And this can result in the pH of rain being lowered even further below 5.6. This is very much a problem. Okay, so first let's think about the sources of these sulfur and nitrogen oxides. So what we find is that many fuels such as coal and petroleum, when they are dug out of the ground and processed, and just before they are burnt, they still have sulfur-containing impurities. These fuels are quite dirty. And what that means is that when they are combusted, as well as the carbon-containing species combusting in oxygen, the sulfur species also combust in oxygen in order to form these gaseous sulfur oxides. And so they are reduced and so they are produced as a kind of byproduct of combustion. Also, when you combust anything in air, because the main component of air is actually nitrogen, you end up reacting nitrogen with oxygen in those flames, and so you also get the production of nitrogen oxides, as well as your desirable combustion process. Interestingly, nitrogen oxides are also produced during lightning strikes. And so the key methods we currently use to sort of remove sulfur, to reduce sulfur oxide emissions, are either pre-combustion or post-combustion. So pre-combustion methods, this means ways to remove, stop sulfur emissions before we actually combust our fuel. So that's going to involve cleaning our fuel, getting the sulfur out of the fuel in the first place, so that when you combust it, you're not also combusting sulfur. Post-combustion methods mean you leave the fuel as it is, you burn it, and you then try and make efforts to reduce the sulfur oxide emissions after the combustion process takes place. So that involves sort of allowing sulfur dioxide to be produced and then trapping that species, usually trapping it in a solid so that it's not no longer a gas and being allowed to go into the atmosphere and therefore form acid rain. Okay, so now let's think about some actual chemistry. What is the chemistry of the situations that are going on here? So in the case of our nitrogen oxides, our nitrogen gas is allowed to react with oxygen gas under these sort of combustion conditions. And the result is we get species like nitrogen monoxide. Now nitrogen monoxide is pretty unstable, which means if it's in the atmosphere and in the presence of lots of oxygen, it's then gonna react with oxygen again in order to form nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide is then the species that interacts with water in the atmosphere and ends up with us forming our nitric acid. That's where our drop in the pH of rain comes from. That's where our acid is formed. This is now going to be deposited down onto Earth, and the pH of the rain is going to decrease. Similarly, our sulfur species in our fuels are combusted in oxygen under these kind of combustion conditions. We end up with species like sulfur dioxide being produced. Those sulfur dioxides can react with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce sulfur trioxide. And then sulfur trioxide is the species that actually interacts with your water generally to produce our H2SO4. This is the species that then results in the acidification of the rain, the reducing pH. Uh, I've just realized this reaction is not bad, I just need the three there. So two sets of processes, we're going from nitrogen being combusted or sulfur being combusted via these oxides of nitrogen and sulfur to nitric acid and sulfuric acid, which are the species that actually reduce the pH of rain, and make it more acidic. So what's the effect of this um, increased acidification? Well, firstly, it disrupts ecosystems. And the way it does that is it affects the pH of soils. So here is an example of a forest badly affected by acid rain, resulting in the death of many, many trees and plants that aren't able to function when the pH of the soil gets too low. There are also cases where 
surface water, lakes, large bodies of water become increasingly acidified. Animals that rely on that as a habitat then find that they can't actually live in that habitat anymore because the pH gets too low. Here you can see a graph showing the pH ranges that certain animals are able to withstand. So you can see many of these animals start to die about 5.5 pH. Nat rain is naturally 5.6, so if it gets much lower, that results in the death of a lot of animals. All of the animals that are listed here will die in, in surface water that is below pH 4. So this disruption to ecosystems and habitats is a big problem. It also results in corrosion of certain materials, things like limestone and marble. We've seen the react limestone and marble are both based on calcium carbonate. We know how acids react with carbonates to form CO2, water, and a salt. Essentially, they can just corrode these and dissolve them. That means that statues end up getting dissolved. Also means that naturally occurring cliffs or marble or limestone um, rock formations end up dissolving as well. This can also be a problem. And these are the main effects of acid rain that you need to be aware of. So key points to take home from this video. We saw that acid rain is formed due to oxides of nitrogen and sulfur dissolving in water in the atmosphere and therefore producing various kinds of acids. These result in the pH of rain being lowered below the natural pH of 5.6. We saw in terms of the sources of these oxides and nitrogens, they're mainly formed as a result of combustion. Sulfur oxides come from impure fuels that contain sulfur, and then nitrogen oxides just come from the combustion process in air in general. So if we wanted to decrease sulfur oxide emissions, we can either do so pre-combustion by cleaning the fuel, or post-combustion by trapping the sulfur oxides after, after the combustion process. And then finally, you saw that acid rain can have adverse effects on ecosystems, as well as increasing the rate of corrosion of certain materials that are known to react with acids.